Well then, uh, another problem was about skill wise. So we solved that problem before. This distance between skill lines. But now we are empowered with new methods that will allow us to solve it differently. So uh, two lines in three dimensions are given by equations, well, equations, presentations, right? Uh, for a line we need parametric presentation. Um, so you see one way to write the presentation is in coordinate form x equals y equals z equals Right, and for the other line, x, y, z, and that way you have quite a lot of numbers to deal with here and there. So the idea that I, I'm trying to uh, follow and pull you through the whole idea is that uh, instead of doing coordinate-wise thinking, you better do the conceptual thinking which is compactified. And instead of a bunch of numbers, you compactify them saying that the line is determined by a point and a vector. Let's call it U. The other line is determined by another point, a point on this line, and some vector. Let's call it V. And of course, this point and that vector participate in that parametric presentation as columns of coefficients. But instead of thinking about three different numbers, it's better to think about a point. So this way we have less things to worry about and to keep in mind. And then what we do is we pretend we have a point on the first line a point on the second line. And what kind of point is that? Well, that is a point like P plus U multiplied by some time T. Right, so a point shows up here on the first line. If you start at P and follow the line with that velocity for some time T. And the point on this line shows up as Q plus that velocity multiplied by a different time s. Right? We don't assume now that these two times are exactly the same. And then what we want is to find the distance between them. So we just subtract those two. And subtracting amounts to looking at a vector. So let's call it W. So what you look at is magnitude of the W, which is the magnitude of Q plus V multiplied by S minus P plus U multiplied by T. And that is the quantity you want to minimize. Well, to me, you might be using what? What are the tools that you can apply there? What are the means for the minimization? Well, you apply, well, you change that unknown t and that unknown s. That amounts to allowing this point to move along the first line, that point to move along the second. So you treat s and t as variables, unknowns, and the rest are given vectors or points. So this expression becomes a function of two variables that you want to minimize. And now we, want, we know the procedure, right? We look for the critical point. Uh, 
So we say that the gradient of f has to be zero. And that means the partial of f with respect to s and the partial of f with respect to t both have to be zero simultaneously. And again, of course, you can figure out what f is in terms of coordinates. And you can write down that long, long, long formula. Now, the problem about it is that once you write it down, you'll be lost in understanding what those things mean. So let us try to find those partial derivatives without substituting coordinates. So really, multivariable way. So how would we differentiate that expression with respect to s? Well, we can treat that expression as composition. We should differentiate this with respect to w, which is non-trivial operation on its own. Right, because differentiation of the magnitude of a vector is not a simple thing, but we did it several times. So the partial of f with respect to s is going to be derivative of that, which is what? The magnitude of w goes in the denominator, and the numerator becomes w itself dot producted with partial of w with respect to s. So that is expression in terms of w, and the only curious thing is that partial of w with respect to s. So what is that? Well, if you look at this formula for the w, what do you think the partial of that, well, the inside of the absolute value, should be with respect to s? It should be v. Yeah, right? So that vector is actually v. And what we have here is w dot v divided by the magnitude of w. And the same thing for ft. Let's do it immediately. ft is going to be w dot wt divided by magnitude of w, and wt is, you tell me, that will be negative u, right, because Okay, so we found both partial derivatives. Now what does it mean that we equate those to zero? What's the meaning of the system now? What's the meaning of this equation? That equals zero means what? Means the dot product is zero. And so w dot v is zero. And the second equation says w dot u is zero. What does that mean? Well, the first equation says w is perpendicular to v. And the second says w is perpendicular to u. And that is something we can visualize, right? because w is a variable vector a vector from one point on the first line to the point on the second line. And what calculus suggests by taking these partial derivatives means something geometrically. It actually suggests that this vector has to be perpendicular to both lines simultaneously. And that's what we recovered by some different ideas, right? Geometrically, last time. So, 
we don't need those ideas if we just follow the calculus blindly. It tells us. But it's good to have those ideas in mind. Right? It's good to understand that, well, the shortest distance is realized by an interval that is perpendicular to both. So once you do calculus, it's actually good to track the ideas in multi-dimensional way and to well to check what those mean. So anything else about this problem? Actually I don't want to solve it. Numerically it's solved on the file. <laughs>